Krishna Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, <coughs> Hare Hare, oh, Krishna. Um, can I mute everyone and can you unmute yourself? Yeah, you mute everyone, yeah. Mute them all. Okay, go on. And I'll unmute okay. myself, right? Um. Oh. Recording in progress. Okay, go on. All right, we're on chapter two of the Nectar of Devotion. Chapter two is entitled The First Stages of Devotion. <coughs> Okay. The three categories of devotional service which Srila Rupa Goswami described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu are listed as devotional service in practice, devotional service in ecstasy, and devotional service in pure love of God. So devotional service in practice means the, t the technical name in Sanskrit is Sadhana Bhakti. And devotional service in ecstasy is what we call Bhava Bhakti. And devotional service in pure love of God is Prima Bhakti. They are all, they can, they can all be pure devotees. Just, just because somebody is doing sadhana bhakti doesn't mean they can't be a pure devotee. There are many there are many wonderful devotees who just do sadhana bhakti. They don't have bhava and they don't have prema, but they do sadhana very nicely. They're very pure souls. So Srila Prabhupada then continues, he says, there are many subheadings in each of these categories. Generally, it is understood that in the category of devotional service in practice, there are two different qualities. Devotional service in ecstasy, however, has four qualities. And devotional service in pure love of Godhead has six qualities. 
การวิตนเสียสารับใช้ในความรักองค์พระควานเนี่ยมีหกคุณสมบัติ And these qualities are going to be explained later on in this book by Rupa Goswami. และคุณสมบัติเหล่านี้เนี่ยก็จะได้รับการอธิบายโดย Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Rupa Goswami suggests that the person eligible for Krishna consciousness or devotional service can be classified by his particular taste. ความสัมพันธ์ตรงนี้สิริรูปกุศลมีแนะนำว่าบุคคลผู้มีสิทธิในพระชนจิตสำนึกหรือการพิจารณาเสตระลักใช้สามารถแบ่งประเภทโดยรสชาติเฉพาะของบุคคล He's, he says, Rupa Goswami says that devotional service is a continual process from one's previous life. No one can take to devotional service unless he has had some previous connection with it. ไม่มีผู้ใดสามารถปฏิบัติการวิตนเสียสารับใช้ได้นอกจากจะมีความสัมพันธ์ในอดีต For example suppose For example suppose in this life I practice devotional service to some extent ตัวอย่างเช่น Even though it is not 100% perfect, whatever I have, whatever I have done, will not be lost. ถึงแม้ว่าจะไม่สมบูรณ์ร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์ไม่ว่าจะทำได้เท่าไหร่จะไม่สูญเปล่า In my next life, from the very point where I stop in this life, I shall begin again. ชาติหน้าจะสานต่อจากจุดที่จบลงในชาตินี้แล้วไปเริ่มต้นใหม่ In this way. There is always a continu continuity. But even if there is no continuity, if one, if only by chance a person, a person takes interest in a pure devotee's instruction, he can he can be accepted. And can advance in devotional service. Anyway, for persons who have a natural taste for understanding books like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, devotional service is is. Devotional service is easier than for those who are simply accustomed to mental speculation and argumentative processes. อย่างไรก็ดีผู้ที่มีรสชาติตามธรรมชาติเพื่อเข้าใจหนังสือพระกวัตคิตาและสรีมันพระกวัตตังการให้ตนเสียสละรับใช้จะง่ายกว่าพวกที่ชอบวิธีการคาดคะเนนและการถกเถียง So Srila Prabhupada is telling us here, according to Rupa Goswami's information, that devotional service is usually from the previous life. Maybe in the previous life. You were born in a devotee family. But 
maybe somehow, maybe you weren't, maybe you weren't in a devotee family. Maybe, you, maybe in your previous life we were in an animal body, but in the home of a, maybe we're a dog at the home of a devotee. Or maybe we were a tree that stood in the garden of a devotee. Now, somehow, we have come to this human form of life. Now, we don't know who we were in our previous life. And it doesn't matter who you were. It doesn't matter where we were, what we were doing in our previous life. But somehow we came in contact with Prabhupada and Prabhupada's teachings. Somehow we got a book and we read it and we were interested. Wherever we go to introduce Krishna consciousness, we always just go and distribute the books. Just like when I first went to Thailand, I would just go and distribute books. Every day I would just go around the shops and I go to the markets and I would just distribute the book. And what, some, on Sundays we would go to the park, Lumpini Park in Bangkok. So when we were in the park, we met some devotees. We met people like Tondu and Dayala Harinam and uh, other people. And they were interested and they knew devotees because they were from Burma and they knew devotees in Burma. <coughs> so they got devotees, they got other people interested, and they got a small center. Yeah, we had a we had a very small center there in, in Bunkek in the beginning. It was a very small place. And we would go to the park every Sunday and we would chant there in the park. And we kept distributing books, going out to distribute the books. And gradually, more and more people came, became interested. And the same, we did the same when we first went to China. I remember we went with Tamal Krishna Goswami and Girid Hari Swami and we all went to the park. Uh, 
Tama Krishna Goswami, Laga Giri Dari Swami. And we would chant, and we would ask, we would get the, we would teach all the people in the park how to chant. And we told them we're going to have a competition, and if you chant nicely, we'll give you a prize. So when they chanted nicely, we'd give them a book. And then we'd ask them, uh, uh, then we'd go back again the next week and we'd ask them, did you read the book? Did you like the book? And if they didn't read the book, then we know they're not very young. Hare Krishna, Archana. Archana. Recording in progress. Okay, Archana, can you hear me now? Archana, can you hear me? Now, yes, Guru Maharaj, I can hear you. Okay. So. So, uh, if they didn't read the book, we would think, well, they're not very interested in Krishna consciousness because they didn't read the book. But if they read the book, then we know that we would ask them, did you like it? They'd say, yeah, very interesting. We, we, I really like this book. Then we'll know, oh, this is a potential devotee. This person can be a good devotee. So sometimes Krishna places devotees in different parts of the world in different conditions. Krishna some people think, oh, if you're born and if you were a if you were a, a pious man in your previous life, then in this life you'll be born in a Brahmana family. But. Krishna puts people all over the planet, in different countries, in different places. Krishna knows in the future, the devotees are going to come and they will need help in these different countries. So sometimes even somebody maybe was a devotee in their previous life and then in, now in this life they're put into a country where it's not very devotional. But Krishna sends the devotees to help them, to bring them to Krishna consciousness. Just like when Prabhupada went to America, he got so many people to help him. And Prabhupada said to the devotees, he said, you are all sent by my spiritual master to help me. So, Prabhupada understood 
the devotees were put everywhere by Krishna just to help him to spread Krishna consciousness. And if somebody does some service for the pure devotee like Prabhupada, then they get great benefit. So what is the sign that somebody is actually a devotee, that somebody has uh, some interest in Krishna consciousness? The sign is that they like the books, they read, they're interested to read the book, like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is very important that everyone has to have a taste, you have to have an interest to read the books and to hear about Krishna. <coughs> okay, we'll go ahead, read more of the book, right? Okay. Uh, Prabhupada writes, to support this statement, there are many authoritative assertions by the learned scholars of bygone ages. Right, because Prabhupada is showing us that anybody can become a devotee. We don't, doesn't, they may never have done devotional service before, but they may have. We don't know. So according to the general opinion, a person may become governed by certain convictions derived by his own arguments and decisions. Just like some people, they, they just want to be vegetarian. They, not, they don't know about religion or different teachings of religion, but they just feel it's wrong to eat meat. They just feel it's really wrong. They don't want to do it. And some people, we really don't like things like intoxication and illicit sex and stuff. They, they really hate it. They don't, have, they, they don't have anything to do with that. Even without, even though they were not trained by anybody, they just know that these things are not nice. So different people have different ideas and they have different philosophies about life. So somebody may be, it may be a, 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 good, a good philosopher, he may be good at arguing. 
And someone has some ideas, he maybe teaches, talking about some philosophy about life and some teach what he thinks is the goal of life, and somebody will come along and they can defeat him. So, if you just try to understand only by arguing, you know, somebody will, you may argue somebody, maybe you can defeat someone, but then somebody comes along, they can defeat you. So we just argue, then we'll never know what is actually the truth. So, but if we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, from the Srimad Bhagavatam we learn that we have to follow in the footsteps of the great authorities. Right, who are these authorities? Well, there's the Mahajans, there's the 12 Mahajans, they're authorities. And we have also the six Goswamis, they're also authorities. And we have the Acharyas in the line of disciplic succession. They're also authorities. So we have to hear from these people. All right. So Prabhupada explains, he says, here is a general description of devotional service given by Rupa Goswami. Right. Rupa Goswami has already said, devotional service can be divided into three categories. Devotional service in practice, devotional service in ecstasy, and devotional service in pure love of God. So Rupa Goswami is now going to describe to us what is devotional service in practice. I'm having a cold. Oh yes, Gomash, your voice really sound really sick. Yeah. So practice means employing our senses in some type of work. <coughs> so devotional service in practice means to use our different senses in the service of Krishna. And we have different kinds of senses. <coughs> we have 
We have knowledge senses, we have working senses. And we have our mind also. So, some of the senses are meant for giving, for getting knowledge. Just like we use our eyes to see things, we get knowledge from our eyes. And we, we, uh, we can hear, we can use our ears, we also hear. And so we have, we have five knowledge acquiring senses. With the nose we can smell, with the tongue we can taste, with the skin we can touch. And then we have also the mind, which is to, the mind is, has desires. And these desires are there in different stages, thinking, feeling, and willing. So the practice means we have to use both the mind and the senses to practice. And, and when we what we when we practice it's not to do something which is artificial Prabhupada gives an example he said just like a child has to practice to walk now, if we practice walking on our hands, that would be artificial. <laughs> but if we walk, practice walking naturally, use the legs, that is natural. So walking is not unnatural. If you walk on the on the feet, walk on your feet, that's not unnatural. That's natural. It's not artificial. Because every human, if they're healthy, you know, they'll have the ability to be able to walk. So, a child has a, should it should grow up learning to walk with a little practice. He learns to walk. In the same way. In the same way, devotional service to Krishna is also natural. It's not artificial. And Prabhupada gives that example. He said, even uncivilized people, just like aborigines who may live in the jungle, but they will offer their obeisances to something wonderful.
So the Aborigines, they live in the jungle, they don't go to school, they're not educated people, they don't know anything about life or about the world. <laughs> but they learn to respect different things in nature. Just like there may be a big mountain and it may have a volcano inside, so they will they will worship the volcano. Or they will worship the sun or the moon. Or they will worship some big, powerful, gigantic animal. And sometimes they even worship ghosts who are somewhere living in a tree or something. So although they don't have much education, they understand there's something in the world, there's some power behind them, greater power than they are, and they will respect that power. They understand. In other words, the natives, the Aborigines, they understand they're not supreme. There's some people, greater powers than them. So even though these people are not very pure, they're not pure. They're just natives living in the jungle. They're hunters. They don't have any knowledge or any education. So they're, they have bad karma, heavy karma. But still they can understand there's some supreme power higher than them. And the same way, everybody in the world, we also understand there's higher powers than we are. We're not supreme. No, and that high, that supreme power is actually under the control of Krishna. So we want to understand this kind of consciousness, Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada explains there are different methods by which we can use our mind and senses to understand this. Yeah, we can use our mind and senses to develop consciousness of Krishna. Just like the child learns to walk by practice. Now there are some living entities, there are some creatures, they cannot walk. Just like snakes, you know, snakes, they don't have any legs. They can only crawl on the ground. 
มือนกับงูงูเนี่ยไม่สามารถเดินได้สามารถเรือได้เนี่ย So you cannot expect a snake to get up and walk. If somebody doesn't have any legs, you cannot expect them to walk. So Prabhupada said in the same way, you cannot become Krishna conscious just by practice. เหมือนกันเซพวันก็บอกว่าบุคคลเนี่ยก็ไม่สามารถที่จะเป็นกิจสัมพันธ์ได้ถ้าไม่มีการฝึกฝน Prabhupada said there is no practice by which we could just become Krishna conscious เพราะฉะนั้นตรงนี้ก็ได้บอกอย่างชัดเจนว่าเราจะไม่ในเราจะต้องมีการฝึกฝนถึงจะเราจะฝึกตัวนี้ให้มีกิจสัมพันธ์ได้ But there are certain activities When we do them, they will help us to become Krishna conscious. Certain things which we do, which will cause us to just under to be, to start to think about Krishna. Ah, things that will cause us to start to think about Krishna. So that. That practice, that is called sadhana bhakti. Just like devotees, what do we do? We practice, we practice chanting Hare Krishna every day. This is that is sadhana bhakti. Every day you hold the beads and you chant, chant on each bead. You chant the maha mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Well, we have to chant. That this is the beginning of our sadhana bhakti, chanting the holy name. And if we're fortunate, we can go to a temple and we can take part in the in the kirtan there in the temple. We meet. We go with the devotees, and we will see them worship Krishna. And you go to the temple. We will offer our obeisances to the deities. And we will do things like worship the tosi tree. Perform the tosi arti, and circumambulate tosi, and bow down to tosi, and pour water on tosi. Actually, we don't pour water on Tosi directly. We pour water on the ground, which is around Tosi. Some people don't know. They pour the water directly on Tosi. That's not so good. It's better to put the water on the root, on the ground around Tosi. So you pour the water around around on tosi, and all the leaves and branches they will all be nourished from the root. 
ถ้าเกิดว่าแค่เราใส่น้ำไปที่ดินตุลสีอะไรเงี้ยก็จะทำให้ทั้งดอกระบายของตุลสีนั้นได้รับประโยชน์ But if we pour the water directly onto the leaves and branch, then the leaves will fall off. So this is practice of sadhana bhakti, doing this activity like worshiping Tosi, and chanting Hari Krishna mantra. Then we also offer Guru Puja. We worship s h r i l a Prabhupada, and we offer flowers to Prabhupada. And then we also have to hear the scriptures like s h r i m a d Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. You have to hear from devotees. It's nice to read, but it's more important to discuss. <laughs> so we have many books which have to be read, like s h r i m a d Bhagavatam, twelve cantos. And in the in the s h r i m a d Bhagavatam, there are eighteen thousand verses. So we have to read these verses. We should read. Prabhupada taught. He said one verse a day is good. You read one verse a day and discuss it. Explain the meaning. And Bhagavad Gita has seven uh, hundred slokas. You have to read the Bhagavad Gita every day. If you read one verse a day, then in two years you can finish the whole Bhagavad Gita. But Prabhupada said we can read a chapter, one chapter a day of the Bhagavad Gita. I read one chapter, and then you fin read the whole Bhagavad Gita. And when you finish it, then you read it again. And you should read the Bhagavad Gita six, eight. Ten, twenty times. We should, and we should start to know all the different slokas of the Bhagavad Gita. So this is the way in which we will practice sadhana bhakti. We take part in these activities. We have a morning program. We have an evening program. And it's also. Generally, we all get up early in the morning. Because morning is the auspicious time for the practice. And we we see also the Buddhist monk. They also wake up early in the morning. เราสามารถเห็นได้ว่า
พระของศาสนาดาวพุธเนี่ยก็จะตื่นนอนตอน And the Muslim people, they also have early morning prayers. And the Christian people, they also have the mass early in the morning. And so it's customary, pious people. Religious people, they will wake up early in the morning because the morning is the peaceful time of the day. And sometimes people, you know, met met people. At, People usually they're married and they have children, and if you wake up late, then the children will get up with you. If but if you wake up very early, the children will be sleeping. So it's good you have peace. You can pray better. You can chant better when the children are asleep. <laughs> So the morning time is good to do sadhana bhakti. And Prabhupada mentions that there's an auspicious time. Which is one and a half hours before sunrise. So he said that's a good time for spiritual practice. So sadhana bhakti to do sadhana bhakti, you have to wake up early in the morning. If you don't wake up early, maybe you're working late at night. Then difficult to wake up early in the morning. So Lord Chaitanya said, "There are no special rules. Everybody can do according to their way." Then he said, "Even you're not able to get up early in the morning. Still, you can do it. You can do bhakti." But it's easier. It's more powerful when you do it early in the morning. Okay. So we'll stop now and ask if there's any questions. Okay, Namesh. Are any questions in the Chinese chat? Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare yes, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. 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 So Archana, yes. the Chinese devotees are going to ask questions tomorrow morning because I give class tomorrow morning to China. Oh, okay, okay. So evening can just be Thai devotees tonight. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Mm. Not really, Guru Maharaj. No question today. Okay, Ar uh, Sati, Rugod ni yo wenti na ben ni kai jin ten wen. I mean, Thai Thai functions are mutual wenti. Okay. 
哈利·克里斯纳·古尔曼拉，呃，我我有一个简单的小问题，就是我们刚才学到了，就是哈帕德说我们在。嗯、呃，连续就是我们这一世是，就是这个奉献服务是连续持续不断的嘛。然后就说我们已经有了前程，就是前世的积累的一些奉献服务。但是前段时间我听那个，呃，一位姑姑讲课说，我们就现阶段我们大部分人的这个奉献服务。还没有什么虔诚的积累，都是急着圣帕帕德的仁慈，我们才有了这样的机会。嗯，就是我不知道这个怎么理解。嗯嗯。So Sati said she heard some somebody speaking. They were giving a lecture, and they said that most of us who came to Krishna consciousness, we didn't have any piety. It's only Prabhupada's mercy which brought us to Krishna consciousness. But Prabhupada's writing here in the Nectar of Devotion, that generally is due to our pious, you know, because of some piety in the previous life, that we've become devotees. So what she was asking, which way is it? Okay, okay. Uh, ask, 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 ความจริงแล้วเนี่ยพวกเราเนี่ยไม่ได้มีกิจกรรมบุญหรืออะไรหรือเราไม่ได้ทําบุญอะไรมามากในอดีตหรอกแต่ที่เราได้แต่ฉันที่สำเนียงอยู่ในปัจจุบันนี้เนี่ยสืบเนื่องมาจากพระเมตตาของสาวกหรือพระเมตตาของศิลปวัตรแล้วแต่ตรงนี้เนี่ยสายพวานอธิบายว่ามันเป็นผลบุญที่เราทํามาในอดีตชาอันนี้ตรงนี้เนี่ยเราควรใจอย่างไร Yes, uh, this came up. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita which says the uh, Yesham twenty gatam papam jananam punya karmanam. The devotional service is for people who have act, who are freed from sinful reactions and who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life. Uh, So devotee asked Prabhupada, "Does this mean we we were that we became devotees because we acted piously in previous lives?" ก็เลยทำให้สาวกเนี่ยถามเซอร์พาวานบอกว่าอันนี้เนี่ยพวกเรามาเป็นกิจกรรมสำเนียงได้เพราะว่าในอดีตเนี่ยเราทำเราทำ So, so Prabhupada laughed when he heard this. He said, "I am creating your pious activities." We have to understand there are different kinds of pious activities. If you do pious activities on the material platform. That will not give you Krishna consciousness. Just like if you donate money for the hospital or. Service for a pure devotee, then that can give you Krishna consciousness. Get the opportunity to do even a little service for a devotee and for a pure devotee. If we do service, even just a little service, then that will give us. Uh, We get a lot of benefit by doing service for the devotee. It is said, "Mahat sevam dwaram mahur vimuktes." By serving the devotees, it opens the doors to liberation. จากการที่เราเนี่ยทำการรับใช้สาวผู้บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยมันเป็นหนทาง
หนทางประตูแห่งการรู้แจ้งแห่งตนเนี่ยมันได้เปิดขึ้นแล้ว so yes uh, we became devotees by p r a p a s mercy not only us <laughs> you could say practice maybe but maybe we did maybe we did some service also for devotees in our previous life <laughs> Just like j a n p a r a t became a deer, and in the body of the deer he used to go and he used to eat the remnants of the devotees. <laughs> so next life he was born in a Brahmana family. And Narada Muni, he got the chance. He was a little boy, and he was helping his mother. And some sadhus came to their home, and he helped his mother to serve them. And he also got to eat the remnants of their food. Next life, he became a great devotee, Narada Muni, the son of Brahma. But we see some people. They take up Krishna consciousness very easily. It's very natural for them, and for other people, it's not so easy. It's not so natural. We, I remember, there was this one devotee. We, uh, in, the devotees first went to China and. There was this one man, young man came, and you know we just dressed him up in devotee clothes. We put him in a dhoti, saffron dhoti, and k u r t a and everything, and he just loved it, you know. And we put tilak on him and everything, and he just loved it, you know. And he became a, a very nice devotee, and he's still a nice devotee. Mm. ท่านบอกว่ามีสาวคนหนึ่งเนี่ยเป็นสาวคนตีนเป็นคนตีนเนี่ยแล้วก็พาเขามาเขาชอบการแต่งตัวแบบสาวกมากเลยพาเขามาแต่งตัวเหมือนสาวกแล้วก็เจิมแบบเจอเหมือนสาวกทําทุกอย่างเหมือนสาวกปรากฏว่าเขาชอบมากจนสุดท้ายเขากลายเป็นสาวกที่ดีมากปัจจุบันเขาเองเป็นสาวกที่ดี But other people, you know, they don't. Oh no, I don't like this clothes. I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, so many things. They have difficulty. They don't like things. You know, it's so sometimes very difficult for people to become devotees. Some people come devotees very easily, and some people it's a struggle. แล้วบางคนเนี่ยก็จะบอกว่าโอ้ไม่ชอบการแต่งตัวแบบนี้ไม่ชอบทรงผมแบบนี้ไม่ชอบการทาแบบนี้บางคนแต่So it it's a lot to do with uh, you know our previous life, what we were doing in our previous life. Some people are very. You, they're very dedicated, and they really want to to spread Krishna consciousness. And they're always thinking how to make programs and how to introduce people to Krishna. Uh, so this is because they, you know, they must have had some connection with. Krishna before. And Krishna put them into a family so that quickly they can take up Krishna consciousness. Okay, v a i s h n a v a v a n i has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. 
I see some people they cha- they 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 don't read books but uh, they keep uh, chanting one round one or two years but still there is no improvement they ke- they still chant one round but uh, not even giving up meat why is it like that guru maharaj and i also want to know which is more powerful reading books or chanting uh, one time my husband told that uh, he tried to read some books in my in the house but he could not understand uh, anything so i was thinking maybe he has to do chanting and kirtan something and after that they will be able to understand book how is it guru maharaj thank you คำถามนะคะถามว่าการอ่านหนังสือหรือว่าการสวดมนต์สัมพันธ์กับการฟังมาดีเนี่ยเคยเห็นคนอ่านหนังสือแต่ก็เห็นว่าอ่านหนังสือเนี่ยอ่านแล้วไม่เข้าใจสวดมนต์ดีกว่าไหมต้องสวดมนต์ควบคู่ไปด้วยไหมถึงจะทำให้เขาเนี่ยเข้าใจเนี่ย Well, some people they just chant one round. They, they, you know, they, they don't want to go any further. They're not able to commit themselves. It means, you know, that's as far as they're able to go. They're not very advanced devotees. They, They don't want to take up the full process seriously. We have to just simply encourage them, and we okay. You chant one round, you know, but keep hearing. Encourage them to come. Try to get them to do more service. Service is very helpful if they, if you can engage people in service. That can purify them. And since some kind of people are not going to be able to help them, they are not going to be able to help them. Because they are not going to be able to help them, they are not going to be able to help them. Although they are only chanting one round, they are our congregational devotees. They are not going to get initiation, but they are our congregation. They're, they have faith in Krishna, so you have to engage them. In devotional service, give them the chance to do some service. Let them go shopping, purchase the boga, help get them to help cutting and cooking and cleaning. Yeah. We have to engage people in Krishna consciousness. Find out what they can do. Maybe they they like to get flowers and make the flower garland for the portraits, or maybe they make a flower vase for the altar. Some people do these things very nicely. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, you can get them to help to come for a program. Maybe like you go somewhere outside, outside program, get get them to come along to to chant with you, you know, just to be with you to show that he's one of our devotees. <laughs> You know, he carries the books, or he carries the madanga, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and he just he then he starts to feel that I'm a devotee. I'm a devotee. And we we don't want them to feel that they're not devotees. They are devotees, but they're just on a lower level. They only chant one round. So we have to encourage them, get them to do more seva, and take them for programs and things. And then they feel more part of what they're involved in. นี่เราทำได้ก็คือเราก็ควรที่จะส่งเสริมเขาเนี่ยให้เขาเนี่ยมาทําการรับใช้มากขึ้นอย่างเช่นเพราะว่าสิ่งนั้นเนี่ยมันจะทําให้กระตัวเขาเองเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้น Yeah we can't we cannot always be complaining to them oh you just chant one r o u n no you know we have to appreciate them that oh very good you're chanting you know okay. but the idea is get them to do service we have to engage them and then they feel more part of our family part of the Krishna conscious community and that's what you want. <laughs> ให้ได้เยอะที่สุดได้ด้วยการที่ให้เขาเนี่ยมาปฏิบัติการรับใช้แล้วบอกเขาว่าเออสิ่งที่เธอทำเนี่ยดีแล้วนะเธอสวดด
ให้กําลังใจเขาให้เขาสามารถปฏิบัติได้ไป And then you were asking about your husband about what's more important that he read, tried to read the book he couldn't understand it so you know then encourage him to come for the kirtan maybe he can join in the kirtan. Actually, devotional service is absolute. It's not that one is more important or more powerful than another. They're all powerful. But we do say Krishna consciousness actually begins with chanting the Maha Mantra. So if he can join in the kirtan, or if he can even just sit and chant with you sometimes a little while, it's very good. Let him get get taste. You have to be patient. It takes time to bring people to Krishna consciousness. But don't feel discouraged. And the same is true with your husband. That get, he does service, with, just like when you had the Indian festival in the park. You told me how he helped you carry everything to the park. So he's very good like that. He does do service. And sometimes he gives donations to devotees also. So he's very, he's doing charity, he's giving contributions to devotees. That's very good. So definitely he's got some seeds of devotion there. You just have to keep engaging him, get, get him to do more, eat more prasadam, you have to cook nice prasadam for him. And you, and you have to encourage him to do service, get him, engage him in different activities. He can be a great help to us there. Mm. Okay. Yes, Guru. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for the question. All right, so we'll stop here tonight. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank, thank, Archana, thank Archana for her translation. Thank all, uh, China devotees also and all the devotees listening. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Go back to the